What are Damon's feelings toward Catherine right now? I was a little surprised that even despite their troubled history, he gave her up to Silas. Yeah, and she won't die. Yeah. <laughs> Catherine, I mean, Damon wants Catherine dead as a doornail. I mean, who knows if he'll get his wish. But I think that she reminds him of everything awful he's ever done. She taught him how to kill, taught him how to enjoy it. She taught him how to... She, she really, you know, by the way, and I, and I learned this, you know, resentment is something, resentment is anger toward yourself for something you allow to happen. You know, I think Damon victimizes himself when it comes to Catherine saying, she did this to me, she did that to me. Um, kind of victimizing himself, but in all actuality, he does have a point, you know, and it sounds a little twisted, but to prove the point, if a child is abused by an adult, that's just outright wrong. That child had no, um, no say in the matter. Catherine did a very similar thing to Damon, where she compelled him to fall in love with her. She compelled him to do all these things, and it wasn't right. She turned him into a monster, something he hasn't been able to stop. But he could have, you know, Stefan while he has become a monster, has really trained himself to not be that way. So, <clears throat> ultimately, Damon is sort of victimizing himself and being a baby about it. But he does have a point. He has so much anger. I mean, imagine waiting for someone for 150 years. But what I find so funny about Damon, he doesn't have the wherewithal to sort of deduce by virtue of his age, being a 23-year-old man, boy, when he fell in love with her and when he lost her. That naivete of this 23-year-old, you know, like a, like a puppy, like a Labrador puppy, like, oh, I'm going to chase the ball, I'm going to chase the ball. I mean, just, he had focused on her for so long. Um, and now, rather than being able to be introspective about it, sort of look at it from a different point of view, as a grown man, he would probably be able to see his way through it and find some sort of compassion for her. But that is not happening. He hates her. And uh, and he just wants her gone. You know, she causes a lot of problems. And to Damon, it's like, <clears throat> if you're going to cause me a lot of problems, you better be giving me something. Whether it's bedroom time, whether it's booze, whether it's fun. Better be something that I can value. You know? Because if Damon finally got the girl, and it sort of seems like now he might lose her. It's sort of writing that way a little bit. So what happens to Damon if that happens? Um, you know, girls are meant to be gotten and lost. Just like boys are. I mean, it's sort of the cycle of life. He is like 155 years older than she is. I'm talking about some serious cradle robbery. Um, but, it, well, it's just the thing, you know, it's the age old... It's actually a pretty interesting little metaphor because... You know, girl goes off to college, guy stays home, you know, driving long distances to see each other. And, uh, but in Mystic Falls, yeah, he did get her. And, and, and he's lucky to have that experience. But in Mystic Falls, you know, look, life is, it, relationships are hard in life. Relationships are really hard in Mystic Falls. <laughs> because if you don't have drama in a relationship, then, I mean, if you don't have, Conflict and you have no drama. If you have no drama, you have no TV show. So, um, relationships don't last that long in Mystic Falls. Unless clearly you're a frickin' doppelganger and you're just like, the universe draws you two together. Speaking of doppelganger, can you spell it? Yes, I can. <laughs> D-O-P-P-L-E-G-A-N-G-R. Clearly been practicing. No, just I see the damn word every page of dialogue that I read. Um... And even my fr I have a friend of mine who was in a train station the other day in London and said, oh my gosh, I just saw your doppelganger. Not realizing that there is a guy named Jamie who, um, he's an actor, really cool guy, he's a friend of mine. and <clears throat> he, um, he got into acting, he's, he's studying acting, he's a serious actor, but he... Um, did this cool impersonation thing of me for a while and actually did pretty well with it. But he is weird, like, 
doppelgangers. When we sit next to each other, you, have, you don't even know. It's pretty funny. And she didn't know that this guy existed, but she was, you know, awestruck. And uh, I said, yeah, it's probably Jamie. You probably you would have walked up to him and, you know, patted him on the ass and say, hey, Jamie, how are you? He would have freaked. Um, or hey, Jamie. So, yeah, I mean, you have to have all this drama in Mystic Falls to make this interesting. And we are not short on drama. No. We're short on humans, but not drama. We're short on humans, <laughs> which could be a good thing. Um, you know, we have a lot of humans right now, and there's a lot of bad things happening. Yeah, Damon is, uh, you know, I said to Julie... Years and years ago, we should have Damon like get an electric car, or buy it for Elena, or something because it's this guy. He is 178 years old, and he's thinking, "Well, I'm immortal, so I'm going to be around another millennia." And I've watched the destruction of the world since you know Industrial Revolution started in 1850, and we obviously all know the the hockey stick graph of carbon and temperature rise since 1850. Where he would say, you know, look, I've been around for 170 something years. I'm going to be around for another thousand years. I might as well, <clears throat> sorry, try and protect this world that I'm going to have to live in. Because, you know, Damon doesn't want to see famine and drought. Because then all humans are going to be skinny and there's not going to be a lot of blood. <laughs> you know? So, with Amnesia Stefan, looks like the brother's relationship is kind of rocky. What's their brotherly relationship going to be like going forward? They just need to hug it out and get it over with. Um, the boys, well, what, actually what I love about this is that Stefan, you know, Damon has to take Stefan down memory lane. He has to show him, you know, Stefan has to sort of remember who he was, sort of recreate the, the, the guy that he was. And uh, It's cool to see that this, the, the scenes between the two of them are great. They're fun. Until you wrecked the car. The car was awesome. The car is awesome, man. And they're laughing, and you know, it was a great moment for the brother. Fly, would you get out of her drink? It was <laughs> driving me nuts. That was a, I love that scene because there, you see that little bit that you would, you know, that you would expect it to see. You used to see that in, in flashbacks in eighteen six in the eighteen sixties. You know what I mean? It's pretty cool. Speaking of flashbacks, um. Paul mentioned there's one coming up. Are you going to be in any flashbacks coming up? Am I in flashbacks? Oh, yes. Yes, there's some really cool flashbacks coming up. There's some really brutal flashbacks coming up. Kind of crazy stuff. Really cool stuff, though. We love the flashbacks. I mean, we... I feel we should have flashbacks every few episodes. Um... It really enhances the story and the production value and everything, but it's not, I don't think just an editorial, I don't think it's just a writing component, it's also very hard on us as a crew. Um, to get it all right, it's exceptionally time consuming and, and uh, expensive and all that stuff, so you can't do it all the time. Um, but, you know, if you guys want to donate, we can start a, <laughs> we can start a flashback fun. Judy! Let's get on it. <laughs> All right. Starter. Let's do this. I'm tweeting this now. <laughs> Flashback fun for Vampire Diaries. That Warner Brothers off, like love crazy. that. And uh, Veronica Mars got a movie for the yeah. Kickstarter, so we can get some flashbacks. Veronica Mars? Veronica Mars, the movie. that was a Kickstarter. It's all fan funded. Kristen Bell did a Veronica Mars Kickstarter movie? It's, it's going to be in theaters. Or? That's how Veronica Mars is getting it. That's how they're You're getting their filming. Me. No, Kickstarter. That's really... All right. We're doing this. They like reached their goal in record time. Yeah. And they like, ended up making up way more than they expected to. So this could actually... This could work. This could work. <laughs> that would be funny. Um, wow, yeah. No, that's really, really cool. Oh, I know how to do it. The highest donator gets to choose the storyline. Look at some like Japanese businessman coming in. Like, look, here's a million. I want to see. Oh no, that'd be inappropriate. What's the what's the what's our demographic for this interview? Um, 
No, that's 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 a I love that. I love it. I'm gonna have to text her, congratulate her. That's awesome. Who'd have thunk it? Ten years ago, twenty years ago, that you could raise money for a movie in like twenty four hours on the internet. <clears throat> it's crazy. So what's Damon's relationship with Jeremy going to look like going forward? Because they shared a really sweet hug. Oh, when squishy he revealed. hard Damon. That was nice. Yeah. Well, yeah, you thought you were gonna, he was going to kill him first. <laughs> so. um, that was an intense scene for me. Jeremy is a massive pain in Damon's ass. Um, it's always all about protecting him, and he gets himself into a lot of trouble. And, you know, it's always protecting Elena's little brother. Um, I think Jeremy better watch out when Stefan's no longer with Elena. <laughs> it really pisses him off. He's the, he's the little brother. He's the little brother you have to take care of, you know. Um, the girls love him. 